In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 habits that all highly successful entrepreneurs have in common. Learning and applying even just one or two of these success habits can dramatically stack the deck of success in your favor and make achieving all of your wildest goals and dreams not just possible, but probable. After all, as the saying goes, success leaves clues. And in the case of this video here today, it's left us 10 clues that we can use to help make this week, this month, this year, maybe even your entire life better than you could have ever imagined. After all, as you probably already know, what got you here is not going to be what gets you there. You need the right tools, the right mental tools for the job. So let me show you how it's done, starting with perhaps one of the most important, but also one of the most confusing habits of all out there, and that is goals. So much has been said and written about goals and about setting goals and about achieving goals that it's strange and almost confusing to imagine how the scientific community still hasn't reached some kind of agreed upon consensus about what proper goal setting structure is, what proper goal achievement techniques really work and which ones are just kind of fluff or nonsense or waste of time. After all, no matter where you look, everybody seems to have their own system, their own techniques, their own beliefs and attitudes and seemingly inconsequential details that they swear by and are the reason for success for them achieving all of their biggest and most hairy and audacious goals. For example, one camp says that you should have SMART goals, which are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Basically, a goal that you can realistically achieve. Another goal-setting camp, on the other hand, says that you should swing for the fences with a BHAG, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Something that would be a massive stretch and may even sound unreasonable both to you and to anybody else out there. But we're not done yet. No, sadly, it gets even more complicated. For example, should your goal be outcome-based, where the end result is all that matters? Or should your goal be systems and process-based, where the focus is on those day-to-day -day actions that you take every day in order to achieve it? Well, my friend, the truth is nobody really knows. And by nobody really knows, I mean some very, very smart people all claim that they know, but they all seem to have different views on these things. And of course, there's research and evidence from all of the different camps, which again, makes it that much more confusing for people like us to try to figure out what the best system truly is. But don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. So after reading more books and research studies and articles on goal achievement than I could have ever possibly imagined, here are my three biggest takeaways. Takeaway number one, successful entrepreneurs all have goals, period and they write them down. Not only that, they typically review these goals relatively regularly, often at least once a day, sometimes more. Now, sometimes these goals are SMART goals and sometimes they're BHAGs, but whatever the case, they have goals. Takeaway number two, successful entrepreneurs have both outcome-based goals and system-based goals. Both are important. First off, you do need an outcome-based goal in order to create the system, so you're gonna have to pretty much start there anyway. Next, while having systems in place is incredibly important in order to make sure that you're moving in the right direction and taking that daily focused and strategic action, well, having that outcome-based goal at the end is important to help keep you motivated and help keep your eye on the prize. Takeaway number three is that the most successful entrepreneurs, while they have a vision and almost a mission for their life and for their business, that's far bigger than pretty much any of the goals that they set. So while yes, they did have goals and they did have systems and things they wanted to achieve, they were all pretty much there in order to serve the greater vision and the greater mission, which was a much bigger purpose for their lives. All right, the next success habit is all about creating and cultivating a growth mindset. One thing that truly separates the most successful entrepreneurs in the world from those that are sort of average or, or struggling to get by is this creation and cultivation of a growth mindset, which really comes down to the belief that you can change, that you can grow, that you can learn, and that it's within your power to take control of those things. Now, there's a great book on exactly this topic by Carol Dweck, which is about the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. But for now, just understand what the fixed mindset that is really about is about being fixed, permanent, unchanged, rock solid, but not in a good way. You see, someone with a fixed mindset believes that they are the way they are and there's pretty much nothing they can do about it. Whereas someone with a growth mindset understands that skills and talents and abilities and habits can all be learned and adopted. Another great book on this subject is Personality Isn't Permanent by Dr. Benjamin Hardy, which has quickly become one of my top favorite books of all time. Top favorite, I think that's redundant. What makes the book Personality Isn't Permanent, one of my toppest, most favoritest, bestest books that I've read in the past little bit is the fact that it really stresses the importance of cultivating that growth mindset, of cultivating the version of yourself that you want to be in the future and simply not accepting the, the fact of the limitations that you've probably imposed upon yourself with where you're at today. Now, before you read the book, I do have to give you a bit of a trigger warning that may set a few people off or push them over the edge. 
You see, one of the key premises of the book is that it takes a pretty big shot against personality tests. Things like the Myers-Briggs personality test, the Enneagram, and those classic what Disney character matches your personality best. The Little Mermaid, oh man. The book not only questions the validity and scientific basis behind these personality tests, but also shows that even from a more practical standpoint, they may be holding you back from achieving what you truly want to achieve. And it shows how the person you are today is very much different personality-wise from the person you were 10 years ago. And more importantly, it shows that the person that you could be in 10 years from today could be dramatically different from the person you are today. That is provided you take the necessary actions and adopt the habits like we're talking about here now. All right, the next habit of highly successful entrepreneurs is all about initiative. So to talk about initiative, let me tell you a story, an old parable that explains this point perfectly. There was a farmer who'd gotten a little bit too old to do any more farming and he decided that he was going to pass the farm on to one of his sons. So he brought them both together and he explained that the farm was going to go to the younger son. Now seeing as this went against tradition, the older son was pretty angry. So the old farmer and father, being as wise as he was, said this to his older son. He said, son, I need you to do something for me. We need more stock. So why don't you go to CB's farm and see if he has any cows for sale? So the older son left, went to CB's farm and returned back shortly thereafter and said, father, CB has six cows for sale. The father said thank you to his oldest son and then promptly turned to his youngest son and said, son, I need you to do something for me. We need more stocks. Why don't you go to CB's farm and see if he has any cows for sale? So the younger son did as he was asked, went off to CB's farm, had a chat with him and returned home shortly thereafter where he reported, Father, CB has six cows for sale. Each cow will cost 2,000 rupees. If we are thinking about buying more than six cows, CB will reduce the price per cow by 100 rupees. CB also said they are getting special Jersey cows next week. So if we aren't in a hurry, it may be a good idea to wait. However, if we need the cows urgently, CB said he could deliver the cows tomorrow. The father then turned to his oldest son and said, and that's why your younger brother is getting the farm. So while this is a ruthless and relatively cold parenting exercise and example, it's a perfect example of taking initiative and succeeding in business. The reality is, is as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, nobody's going to do it for you. It really is up to you, up to you to set the course, up to you to decide on the strategy, up to you to either do it yourself or delegate it or decide what needs to be done or not even done in the first place. The more that you understand and not just understand, but embrace this principle, the better you're going to do. And the best way to help make this happen, well, that's the next habit that we need to talk about, which is all about progress, not perfection. The most successful entrepreneurs all understand that perfection is the enemy of progress. It's the enemy of success because, well, first of all, perfection is not attainable. It's an elusive and basically impossible standard. And second of all, the pursuit of perfection just chews up way too much time and money and energy and all those other resources. Basically, once something is good enough, well, any extra effort that you put in is only going to deliver marginal gains, which aren't going to equal or certainly not exceed all of the costs involved with putting them in. Yeah, I think that made sense. So a couple expressions here to keep in mind is that 80% is good enough and done is better than perfect. The key here is to always be focused on moving forward, on improving and on making progress, even small progress. So you see, 1% of improvement a day, well, it quickly adds up and it compounds over time, leading you significantly better off just one year down the road. Of course, one of the best ways to ensure that you're continually making progress and working towards your goals, always improving and always getting better, well, is the next habit that we've got to talk about now. Full disclosure though, this habit and the one right after that, well, they're not necessarily the most mentally healthy habits, but they're they're still important and therefore we gotta talk about them. So with that said, the next habit that pretty much all highly successful entrepreneurs have, or at least had at some point in their careers, typically in the early stages, were that they were extremely obsessed. Basically, they had needs and not just wants. They were committed and not just interested. They had goals and they were set out to achieve them and pretty much nothing was going to get in their way. Long story short, your vision, your mission for your life and for your business, it's non-negotiable. And if it is negotiable, then you need a stronger vision. This is why it's incredibly important to spend a little bit of time kind of self-reflecting and journaling, meditating, you know, whatever works for you. The point is you wanna walk away with some pretty clear answers on what's important to you and why those things are important to you and what sacrifices you're willing to sort of give up and what effort you're willing to put in in order to achieve the things that you say are most important to you. And also, like I've already said, this habit of being extremely obsessive is not necessarily a long-term strategy for, uh, for good mental health. But in those early days, it is going to be important and you're probably going to need to put in a little more than you thought. 
Over time though, it's unsustainable and it will lead to burnout and to overwhelm and to damaged relationships. So I highly advise kind of stepping off the gas before it reaches that point. For me in those early days, what it looked like was working seven days a week and 16 hours a day. And I did this for years on end. Now I'm not saying it was healthy. I'm not even saying that it was smart. I'm just saying that that was sort of the sacrifices that I was willing to make in order to achieve my goals. And in order to work towards my vision of really prioritizing my family as well as my freedom. Actually, it's funny to say that because looking back while I claimed that I was prioritizing my family and my freedom, in actuality, I was kind of sacrificing my family and my freedom by putting in such ridiculous hours. Of course, it was all for the greater good, at least that's what I told myself, and it inevitably enabled me to achieve sort of the level I'm at today where I can actually, in all reality, prioritize family and freedom. Anyway, with all that said, let's move on to the next habit of highly successful entrepreneurs, which kind of goes hand in hand with being extremely obsessed, and that's all about leading an unbalanced life. First off, I have to admit that nobody wants to hear this, and it's hard for me to say it, but it's important to hear it, especially if you're under kind of the false impression that achieving absolutely spectacular levels of success is going to come easily or without sacrifice or without any effort because that's just not the case. Now, like I already talked about in my early days, putting in those long hours, leading an unbalanced life and prioritizing work over pretty much everything else, well, it's a necessary evil in many cases and of course there are exceptions to the rule. However, it's not a long-term solution. This is why the way that I like to think of success in business and in pretty much anything is that a series of sprints with adequate and sort of equal recovery times after. In other words, knowing full well that you're going to need to put the pedal to the metal, but knowing that putting in long hours and making all of these sacrifices and giving up sort of date nights with your spouse or partner or sacrificing evenings or weekends with friends or any other things that you enjoy, it's going to take a toll on your mental and your physical health. That's why you can't do it forever. You need to bake in recovery periods and you need to make sure that you're paying back the debt that you're going to incur. All that said, in my my experience with my friends and with my colleagues as well as with mentors I've had, man, many multi-millionaires, many billionaires, well there's one thing that they all have in common and that's that they put in just an absolutely unprecedented insane amount of work especially in those early days. They didn't do it forever, eventually they managed to back off just a little bit, but man those early days required a lot of sacrifice. Like I said, it's not a popular opinion, but it's one that I stand to be pretty much true in everything I've seen. Of course, there are ways to stack the deck in your favor and make working smarter and harder just a little bit more effective. And that leads me to the next habit of highly successful entrepreneurs, which is to wake up early. Now, first things first, when I say wake up early, this is a pretty subjective term. Some people are naturally more prone to stay up late and work later, and some people are naturally more prone to wake up early and get more stuff done. But you can also train yourself to be become more of a morning person and less of a night owl by simply adjusting your schedule and making sure that your social circle and your friends and your family all understand what you're trying to do. And yes, well, of course, there are exceptions to every rule. Pretty much unanimously, the most successful entrepreneurs tend to wake up early. This normally means well before 6 a.m., often 5 a.m., occasionally even 4 a.m. Now, there is a ton of research on why waking up early is better for your mental health, better for your productivity, better for your overall level of success, has a good correlation with higher income earners and all of that stuff. So I won't go into the details, but feel free to Google them. The simple fact is that waking up earlier is just a really good indicator and precursor to success, whatever earlier looks like for you, but probably before 6 a.m. For me, the reason that this is such a powerful time is that it's before my family is awake, it's before the onslaught of calls and emails and demands on my time start coming in, and it's time that I can really set aside to do my most important work. Focused and uninterrupted. Also, because I went to bed early, like really early. Well, I'm typically pretty well rested as well, which means I'm able to get up and get to work right away. So I get a lot of things done before even 8 a.m. when most of the world is kind of just getting up or getting rolling. The other thing is, is that by waking up early, well, it naturally assumes that you're going to need to go to bed early because we all need sleep. And they found that those late night hours are typically some of the least productive and most wasted hours of your entire day. Again, unless you're one of those few people who really get your best work done at night, most most of us, myself included, will just end up kind of binge watching Netflix or vegetating some other way. 
Vegetating? Vegging. Some other way. All right, the next habit that all successful entrepreneurs have in common is their ability and their priority on finishing things. Essentially, not leaving a bunch of scattered and half done projects everywhere they go, but rather seeing something through all the way to completion. This is important because in the world of business and in the world of life in general, it's not how many things you start, it's how many things you finish that actually matter. After all, nobody wants to buy a half baked cake because that's nasty. So make sure that whatever you start, well, you have a plan and a process and a system in order to see it all the way through to completion. Now, by far one of the biggest pieces of advice that I could ever hope to offer you here that will help you get more done is to start doing less things. You see, one of the problems most entrepreneurs have is sort of this propensity towards shiny object syndrome. Oh, shiny. And many entrepreneurs, myself included, also tend to be naturally and more easily distracted. Hey look, a squirrel. But these are neither admirable or quality traits that you want to encourage and develop. Rather, you wanna quash them and eliminate them as best as humanly possible. This is why working on simplifying your business and your systems and your processes and your marketing and your sales and everything else that goes into your business is so incredibly important. The less things that you have to do, well, the less mental bandwidth they're going to take up and the less mental space they're going to occupy, which leads to a clearer and more consistent stream of actions. So, so make sure that the things you're saying yes to, make sure the things that you're developing and working on and building are worthy of your limited time and attention. By focusing on fewer things and focusing on making them better, you're able to get exponentially better returns by doing less but better. There's a great book by Greg McEwen called Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less that I highly recommend you check out if this is something you struggle with, essentially taking on too much, doing too much, and never really feeling like you're getting ahead at the end of the day. One of the biggest benefits though, of actually setting a strategic course of actions, of actually making a plan, sticking it through, starting something and seeing it all the way through to completion is actually more of an attitude and an identity confirmation thingy. It's very scientific. You see, when you say you're going to do something and then you do it, well, it leads to the next habit that all successful entrepreneurs have in common and that is behavioral congruence. You see, one of the biggest factors of success is confidence. But the question is, how do you develop confidence? And the reality is there's a number of different ways, including acting confidently and dressing confidently and being brave and courageous in your actions. But the reality is, is that confidence is largely an inside game. And one of the best ways to build confidence is to do what you say you're going to do, which proves to yourself that you can be trusted and that you can be relied upon. But if you're looking for the more official definition, here's what the American Psychological Association has to say on behavioral congruence. Behavioral congruence is consistency between the aims, attitudes, and values professed by an individual or group and their observable behaviors. In other words, what you do is what you say you want. The actions that you're taking are reflective of your goals and of the identity and of the places that you actually wanna go. There's an expression that says, show me your calendar and show me your wallet and I'll show you what you truly care about. And this is absolutely the case. If you take a look at your calendar and it's full of activities that are neither goal achieving or really just wastes of time, well then clearly you're not focusing on the things that you say you want. Same thing goes with your wallet or your stack of receipts, digital or physical. Essentially, what are you spending money on? Are they goal achieving activities or are they tension relieving activities? Are you buying courses and programs and mentorships and coaching? Or are you buying TVs and video games and cheap food out? If you're really serious about this whole success thing, especially in the world of business and entrepreneurship, then an incredibly uncomfortable but valuable exercise you can do is to simply track your time over the next week in 30 minute increments, every day, Monday to Friday. Doing this is going to shed an incredible amount of light on where your energy and where your resources and where your time is going. And it's often shocking and disappointing. I do this activity even today, at least once a quarter. And even as a self-professed productivity geek, I still find that I waste a considerable amount of time. Seriously, left to my own devices, I'll naturally start to scroll through social media or do something that isn't really that useful in regards to building my business. But this is why I calendar my time and this is why I'm so defensive of my inputs, making sure that I'm only consuming high quality content, talking to good people and doing everything I can to make my life and the lives of the people that I serve as best I can. And on that note, just happens to be coincidentally the perfect segue into our next habit of all highly successful entrepreneurs, which is that they seek support. Here's the deal. When it comes to business, pretty much regardless of what business or market or industry you're in, where you want to go has probably been achieved before. This is why it simply doesn't make sense for you to go out there and completely reinvent the wheel. There's no need for you to try to figure out all of these things from scratch when somebody has probably done it before and they've probably got a way that they can show you how to do it. 
The amount of time and money and energy that this can save you seriously can't just be said enough. It's insane. I'm talking about shaving years off of the trial and error process. I'm talking about saving tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially even millions of dollars by shortcutting that path to success. And I'm talking about enjoying the process that much more because as we've already talked about, yes, outcome goals are important, but actually enjoying the work that you do, kind of important too. Above all, the key here is to not let yourself get stuck or stalled or stay stagnant for too long. If you've been sitting at the same level for weeks, for months, maybe even for years, it's time to get some help. So if you have the budget to be able to afford a coach or a mentor or a consultant, then by far, this is the quickest path to success. But if you can't afford that in the budget right now, well then look for a course or a program or a workshop that'll also guide you in the right direction. If a course is out of the question, well, there's a ton of books on pretty much every subject you can think of, so you can start there. And if even buying a $20 book is out of the question, first of all, I'd question just how much you truly want the thing that you say you want, but you could even take a step back from that and look at all of the free videos and resources and articles and blogs out there that again will describe a pretty decent path to get you where you want to go or at least get started. So with that said, I've got two things for you. The first of which is if you're looking for personalized and customized help to help you get where you want to go in your life and in your business, well, you may want to check out some of the links I have in the description below on how we may be able to work together. And for more of my best marketing strategies on how to grow your business, the next thing you're going to want to do is check out the video I've got linked up right here. So make sure to check it out now and I'll see you in the next video is that the incredibly successful people all have an incredible, insatiable curiosity. They want to learn, they ask a lot of questions, they're always reading, and they're always consuming new information. For example, I remember being around 20...